We're excited for this one, Angelique. And before we talk Texas-Michigan, I want to get your thoughts on Michigan's week one game against Fresno State. Obviously the first game for the Wolverines since winning the national championship down here in Houston. Uh, It wasn't the most aesthetically pleasing performance. Michigan only had a six-point lead with about six minutes left. They pulled away, so it looked better on the scoreboard. But your thoughts on what you saw from the new-look Wolverines in their first game of the 2024 campaign? Well, I saw what a, a lot of what I thought I was going to see. An offensive line that's, you know, completely new and trying to get some chemistry. I think you saw some faltering there, uh, especially at center where they have a converted defensive tackle in that role now. Uh, you know, you saw Davis Warren, a guy who's, you know, whoever's going to fill the shoes for J.J. McCarthy, those are enormous shoes. And, you know, I thought he played better than, than you know, I, I think most people expected. Um, you know, the running back situation, again, I thought Kalel Mullings would come in and be the, the lead back, the guy who's going to fill that sort of Blake Corum role and, and get those those tough yards. And, you know, they've got to get Donovan Edwards figured out. That guy is is a special back. And I know everybody has seen him on the cover of VA Sports, and, and that's a lot of pressure to live up to. But they've got to figure out a way to to use Donovan correctly. And, and I, you know, I keep going back to that 2021 game at Maryland when they, they used him so effectively as a, as a receiver out of the backfield. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I think most of my, my questions going into this game were on offense and they still are. And defense, you know, again, I, I had some questions with Wink Martindale coming in, you know, he is, he's the OG as he's described himself of this defense that came in in 2021 with Mike, with uh, Mike McDonald, and he is more aggressive, and he said he would be. And sometimes you wonder, is it going to be aggressive to a fault? And and I think a couple times you saw that on Saturday. And uh, but you're right. In the end, it was 30 to 10. It looked a lot bigger, but it was close there at the end. And and you know they got the the big drive, and then the the big Will Johnson um, pick six. You know, Angelique, I think you're you're right about uh, Wing Martindale. He's he's very aggressive defensive coordinator. And when you have a team like this that's still just trying to find them their way offensively with a quarterback, wide receivers, and and you know their main running back not getting it cranked up right away, it's 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 kind of scary. You gotta you gotta be careful on on how you come at people because you don't want to get behind anybody uh, in, in games. And I, I think for the Texas Longhorns, we'll have to be an aggressive group that goes on the attack and tries to score quickly and get a lead and see what they can do, because if he takes his chances and he doesn't get to a, a, a kid like Quinn yours with the receivers that Texas has and with Sark, the way he calls plays, that's that's trouble. Sometimes, you know, last year Michigan could sit back. They could play base defense, and nobody was going anywhere against their base defense. That's how physical they were uh, up front in the secondary at the linebacker position. But when you start bringing guys and you get these one-on-ones and you get caught up, some of that aggressive play may not be what Michigan's looking for. Well, I totally agree. And that's why I think you started hearing it. And I may have been somebody who said, who mentioned Don Brown uh, when talking about Wink Martindale. And Wink Martindale takes great exception to that. You know, that's, that's mm-hmm. you know, he, and he has said multiple times he doesn't appreciate that comparison. But, you know, you look back at the Don Brown defense at Michigan, he, he left the middle of the field open quite a lot. And, you know, Ohio State did major damage on on crossing routes. And I, I think when you, you know, I, I think that that's something that's concerning. And uh, but you're right. I mean, if they're going to bring that kind of pressure, especially against a, a team like Texas, I mean, you've got to be ready to get burned. And, and you know, I think that that's certainly setting up for that possibility. Um, and look, I think they're a great run defense. And, uh, you know, I think that's going to be it's going to be tough for for most teams to run on on Michigan's defense. But um, I he's got to he's got to be more calculated, I think. And, and you know, I, I don't think we're telling Wink Martindale stuff he doesn't know. But you, sure. you wonder sometimes about the stubbornness aspect. You know, guys been doing it this long. So. Yeah, I mean, I, I look at this matchup and I, I mean, I'm really looking forward to seeing because I think it's going to be all about the secondary play. And, um, you know, and, and can this pass rush get to, to yours? Can they rattle them a little bit? That to me will be critical. But, you know, I'm assuming as a veteran like J.J. McCarthy was last year, he's got he's got things figured out and, and he can make those plays that he needs to make. Yeah, Angelique, you brought up the defensive line. I mean, I, I think most college football fans and most Texas fans knew who Mason Graham was going into the year, and preseason All-American, and obviously a huge part of that Wolverines defense in 2023. 
But, man, they come at you in waves, don't they? It's Kenneth Grant. It's Josiah Stewart, who maybe impressed me the most out of anybody in that season opening win against Fresno State. It's Rayshon Benny. I mean, that that group is talented. It's deep. Is, is Michigan's defensive line the best in the country despite some losses from last year's team? Well, it's hard for me to say that because I haven't seen them all. But, yeah, I mean, they've got to be right up there. I mean, when you look at those tackles, I mean, they I think people here like to think they're the best duo in, in the country with Kenneth Grant and, and Mason Graham. And, and I watch both of them a lot. You know, I think Kenneth Grant maybe struggled a little bit more in that first game. But, you know, they're they're really, 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 to use the defensive coordinator's word, stout. And <laughs> uh, But you're right. I mean, you, you look at these guys – like Josiah Stewart. I mean, what a game he had. And, and, you know, I'll throw Derek Moore in there. He's another edge guy who had big play uh, against Alabama in the Rose Bowl. And, and that is something that I remember several years ago, it was like, boy, it was really hard for Michigan to bring in these defensive linemen they needed. They were, they were actually, you know, going a little bit smaller when Don Brown was there. And I remember that frustrated Sean Nua when he was trying to recruit to the defensive line. And now they're going back to this, you know, they've not going back. They're there. They've got this this established group. And and I think it's been, you know, it's been easier for them to recruit these guys here. And you've got Mike Morris out there saying this is edge rush you. So you're, you're bringing in these edge guys. It's when you look at the flip side, it's like, you know, Michigan doesn't have many receivers and it's getting harder for them to bring in those guys. So, you know, on defense, they've got the, the formula and people want to come and play here and, and keep that going. But, yeah, they're impressive. And the, the yeah. front seven's really good. And don't don't overlook Jay Sean Barham. I mean, the, the kid they picked up from Maryland, he's mm. he's going to be a, a much bigger role in this in this defense. Yeah, Graham and Graham and uh, Grant remind me of Sweat and Murphy from Texas last year. That's mm-hmm. tough. That's tough sledding in the middle. I mean, if you think you're going to get in a shotgun and just hand off, and you go one-on-one blocks, those guys are going to slide off. They're going to protect the gaps. Their linebackers are going to flow and, and make plays. Uh, but as you said, the guys on the outside are pretty good too. I love the secondary. I, I just love the, the fact that I, I'm looking at, you know, I, I'm, I'm looking at, at Johnson last week, and I'm thinking the guy looks like he's 5'9", but you're talking about guys that are 6'1", 6'2". They got two corners that are, are – they're tall. They For some reason, they look – they don't – Look as tall. On film, those are tall kids. Those kids have length on them too, you know. And they're not like these 175 pound defensive backs. I mean, they're all 185, 200 pounds that can move and use their length at at and and for sure don't be throwing quick screens out there against those dudes. They seem to time those up. They're very chancy. They will take take chances. Yeah, no, you're right. And and Will Johnson is certainly the centerpiece of that group. I mean, he's the five-star kid, local kid. His dad, I, you know, I've been covering the team so long. I covered his dad when he was at Michigan. Um, so uh, that's I shouldn't say that. I'm aging myself, but that's okay. Uh, but Will Johnson is, you know, he's people, NFL scouts are already talking about where he can go. He can go early, and he's a guy who one of his teammates this week was talking about, I think it was Ernest Hausman was talking about, he he acts like a pro, the way he treats his body, the way he's doing, he's doing, I know during camp, he was getting up and doing Pilates at six in the morning to, you know, to really keep his body fresh and, and, and agile. And, and you're right. I mean, that's, it's, but I do, while I think that their starters are very good, it's, you know, is there the depth? And I think that's a concern, at least in my mind, for their whole defense. Is the depth there like it was last year? And I don't think so, because last year they could really come at you in waves at, at every spot. Um, you know, I, I, I think that that's, that's true for the secondary. They brought in quite a few guys from the portal. Um, they had they lost Rod Moore, their safety and, and at, you know, captain and, and at the, in camp and um, spring ball, pardon me. And uh, I think that was that's a pretty big loss, and that's somebody that you're going into a game like this. You you want someone like a Rod Moore on the field, and and he's not there, but he is on the sideline coaching. But but Will Johnson's a real deal, and I, I think he's really one of the guys looking forward to this uh, this Texas game on Saturday. Uh, let me ask you this: What about the difference between Coach Moore, Coach Harbaugh? I mean, are they are uh, has Coach Moore learned an awful lot from Coach Harbaugh that in, in certain ways he's really really similar to him? It's a great question. Uh, you know, Jim's a little weird. I mean, I, I, you know, he's quirky, yeah. a little weird. Sharon's not. Um, but, you know, Sharon has made it clear. You know, he he 
has learned everything from Jim and you know, Jim's gave him a chance. They talk about their first meeting when he came in from central Michigan to talk to him about the tight ends thing. And, and, you know, they got like, got down. He wanted him to show him what he, what he, how he teaches football. And it, it got a little physical in there. How's it going? And, uh, <laughs> so that's, that's Jim. And, but you know, Sharon is, he has said there's, he does not want to change the culture that Jim established, but he's going to put his wrinkle on it. And, and one of those things, and it was something that all the players talked about is he brought music into practice and they love that. So he's younger. He's like, what, 37 mm -hmm. and, and Jim's 60. And, uh, you know, so I, I think the players relate to Sharon very well. And, and not that they didn't with Jim, but it, it's different. I mean, yeah. Jim, I mean, I, I don't know how many times I can, how many different ways I can say he was a different dude. And, uh, but Sharon's wearing the skinny M like, like Jim did. And, and Jim did that for, for Bo Schembechler, his coach. And, uh, you know, I, I think he's, uh, Sharon is, is a really smart guy and he's very savvy and, and he's, he's going to pick and choose what he, what he drew from, from Jim Harbaugh going forward. But I don't think we're going to see any of the weird little, I sure. mean, uh, there, was a, there was a lot of weird. I could like, I should write a book about all the, uh, the goofy stuff that, that Harbaugh said and did. You're, you're saying, uh, no sleepovers with recruits anymore. <laughs> yeah, I don't think so. I mean, you know, I, I can't believe it was nine years that Harbaugh was here. And I, you think back, I mean, those early years, he really was his, his whole, his whole, he wanted to just get Michigan back on the map, you know, after some sluggish years. And he was willing to go out there and do weird stuff. And, and not, it wasn't always weird. It was just, you know, he's on stage with a rap group, you know, he's, he's like, he's driving around in a yellow vet, you know, trying to get attention. And, and Sean doesn't have to do that. You know, that's, that it's established now. Jim has established this program again, reestablished it. All right. So, and, and, and in that case, when the, we're, the difference between the two head coaches, but there are some guys missing on this staff yes. now that are new. I mean, or the, the, you got to know all these different coaches. They lose some quality coaches that went with Harbaugh to the NFL to replace those guys. It takes a little time. I don't know if the spring through the summer is enough. Aren't these guys still feeling their way around veteran coaches, but you know, the newness of being in a program like that or being around each other, that's got to be a little different too. Well, I think that's a great point. And, and when I was looking at this season, we have to do our, our prediction. I, I mean, I had Michigan going eight and four. And because I, I think that there's so much newness. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, we can talk about the offense, you know, ad nauseum, just all the, you know, the starters gone. But I also pointed to the newness of that defensive staff. And, and yes, Wink is, is a, you know, veteran, grizzly veteran. But he hasn't been in a college game in 20 years, oh, yeah. and and I think that's that's substantial. And then, and then you're bringing in, you know, there's there's really good young talent I think on this defensive staff, but they're learning their way too, and they had to learn. They have to learn what Wink wants. And right. uh, but you know, I think that they showed they showed their chop their chops on as recruiters. You know, they've done a really nice job. You got Lou Esposito is is a really fiery guy on the defensive line. And you got Lamar Morgan in the secondary. And these are guys who are very people, you know, they're people people. And mm -hmm. they want to recruit. And but you know, I think it's gonna take time and to get them all established as as a as a a completely gelled staff. But I, you know, I think certainly the the ingredients are there, but I totally agree with you that that, that is something that was a, a big deal for me, at least when I looked at, at how the season could play out. Angelique Chen Gellis from the Detroit News joining us this morning. Couple more for you, Angelique, and we really do appreciate your time this morning. Uh, you talked about the quarterbacks. Look, I you're way closer to the team than I was, but I I kind of assumed Alex Orgy was going to start for this team. He didn't. It was Davis Warren. Both guys played, but Orgy only threw two passes against Fresno State. What do you think we see on Saturday? Is it a two quarterback system? Is it Maybe a run first type of offense with Orgy. Is it all Davis Warren? How do you think the uh, quarterback position looks at the big house two days from now? Also agree. I thought I thought Orgy would would have this the starting job, and and I think you know in retrospect, I think it would have they would have had to really revamp the offense for him, which you know I, I'm not sure that was a bad idea either to to you know take that leap and because Alex is is supremely talented and. Um, you know, I, I think I asked Sharon on Monday if if they're going to use Alex more than just, you know, sprinkling him here, play in, he comes out. I mean, I'm not sure what exactly they achieved. I think 
if you see Alex Orgy coming in for one play, you have a pretty good sense that he's going to run. Right. And, uh, you know, Sharon, Sharon did do a, a little bit of a Harbaugh and said, well, we'll see. And he does that little smile. Um, on his radio show later on Monday, he he talked a little bit more about it and said that they do have more extensive packages for him. And I think that they are going to implement those against Texas because he he is such a threat. And, and he, um, you know, he's he's a guy who I think they've got to use more. And, and that's not a knock on Davis Warren. Absolutely not. But he's another guy. You know, he he hadn't played a meaningful snap, not by not for any fault of his own. He had cancer but really since he was a sophomore in high school. So, you know, he's getting acclimated to the speed of, of playing in a live bullet game. And, uh, and I think it's, I'm not sure I haven't covered the Brady Henson era at Michigan with the one quarter, you know, Brady, then Henson, not sure that's the ideal thing, but I think if they can get this rhythm going with, with orgy coming in, I think it, I think it'll work pretty well for them. Yeah. Angelique, I, away from the game, my last question for you is, for Texas fans coming there, I mean, these two unbelievable programs getting together for the first time is it's going to be tons of Longhorn fans headed to Ann Arbor. And and for them, what they're going to see around the stadium, around the city of Ann Arbor, this will be something for them. I mean, they're used to big tailgates, barbecues and everything else here in Texas to get to Ann Arbor. I mean, I, I coached at University of Illinois, so I've been there a few times. It is quite the it's it's quite the college scene, and especially this time of the year in the fall when things are starting to change around there. Oh, it is. It's it's really tremendous, and I think I don't know if you've been here since they finally in 2010 when they added the the structure, the brick around the stadium, so it really holds the noise because that was a big knock on the stadium right. that it, it wasn't you know it's not it's big, but you know, where's the sound? So it does that helps, and it, it really makes the place look grand. Um, but yeah, no, I mean the tailgates the tailgates are great. And, um, you know, I think that there's so much because there's a city not unlike Austin, you know, you have a city right there, you have, a, uh, and it's a substantial college town. So there's a lot to do on, on Main Street, on State Street, and, and great places to eat. And, and look, I was sort of hoping I didn't like when the, the, the game flipped, I wanted to go to Austin, because I haven't been there. Of course, yeah. I, covered, I was working in Knoxville, covered the Tennessee women's basketball team playing in t in uh, Austin in like 1989 or something. So I've been dying to go back for a, for this football game. So I got to hold out for a couple more years. But um, yeah, I mean, and it'll be perfect weather. I mean, it, it really will. And and traffic will be what traffic is on a college football Saturday. So I advise getting getting going early for the Texas fans. Awesome. Can you tell who's sponsoring today's video? This video is brought to you by Underdog Fantasy. Underdog Fantasy is the best and easiest place to play fantasy sports. With daily and season-long contests, Underdog Fantasy gives you more ways to win than anyone else. Sign up today using promo code TSU to claim your special pick, plus a first-time deposit offer up to $250 in bonus cash. It's Underdog Fantasy, the best way to fantasy.